I'm Daryl Richardson, and welcome to Behind the Stars, the untold stories of Black industry dancers. Now, I had to come prepared because my next guest is Beach Bound. Let's have a sneak peek of our next Black industry dancer. Writer, actor, singer, composer, creator. I call him the Renaissance Man. Uh, my name is Charles Bernard Murray IV, better known to all of my friends as just plain old CB. How you doing? Um, so I'm going to talk about my journey as a dancer. Uh, I was raised in Richmond, Virginia, where there wasn't a lot of opportunities to dance. And back uh, when I was a child, you didn't really talk about wanting to be a dancer, but I couldn't help myself. My mother tells stories about when I learned to walk, that every time they would put on a song that I liked on the record player, I would pull out another 33 and dance on top of it as if it could hear the song while I was dancing on the record. Couldn't keep myself from dancing. So every time there was a competition on the playground or at school, I would jump in and be the first one dancing. I remember going to a soul train dance contest at the Richmond Mosque Auditorium and believing that I had won only because they chose the judge's daughter who wasn't that good. And I was like, what? But it didn't deter me whatsoever. A friend of mine was afraid to audition for this dinner theater that opened up when I was in high school. So the whole choir went with him and they hired the entire choir to be in the first dinner theater at Richmond. So I got to do Pearly when I was 17 in high school. Dancing had never taken a dance class. Can you imagine? But I was having more fun that could be imagined. I would go to school. I would go to tennis practice after school. And then after tennis practice, go to the theater. And that became my junior year of high school. Then I went back and auditioned for Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope my senior year. So I ended up doing Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope for months while in high High school, it was so much fun. But then I went to college and I decided not to tell anybody that I was trying to be a dancer because I was trying to be all cool and slick and all, all that. But lo and behold, one of my best friends today, Jamie Patterson, was at the school already. And he told the drama department head that I was a dancer who told the tennis coach and they all blackmailed me and said I couldn't play tennis unless I danced in the play. <laughs> so I ended up doing Hello, Dolly in college. So fast forward, I decided to visit a cousin uh, on a summer break in 1978 from college. And she had an apartment on 84th Street. She left me there, went, I don't know where, but my friends took me to a dance class and enrolled me at the New York School of Ballet with Dick Andros. And it was my first time ever being in a dance class. And I was already 19 years old. Then they took me from there down to Frank Hatchett's. And I'll never forget walking in and seeing everybody vop. And I was thinking, what in the world? I'm I in heaven? And I ran away from home, never went back and stayed in New York taking classes from Dick Andros, Frank Hatchett. And then I was introduced to Fred Benjamin, who made me want to be a dancer because all the other times, everything about dance was very athletic for me. But Fred gave me a feeling and a sense of emotion every time we hit the floor and he would had the best music and he would you would feel the music as you dance through the floor with him. So that's when I decided I was gonna be a dancer in New York City. And for some reason, I was very good at it. I always loved to dance. I didn't have the technique, but once I got that technique, you couldn't stop me from working. Um, fast forward, Michael Bennett hires me to do a workshop that turns into Dream Girls, and I'm on Broadway for five years, and I'm able to fulfill a whole lot of lifelong dreams, like help my mother buy a house and do all these wonderful things. But then my life took a turn, and I left show business, but I decided to write. And I wrote my first musical, El Shaddai, that Daryl was in. And I went from just being dance a dancer to a writer, dancer, and choreographer. El Shaddai was a wonderful project for me because it allowed me to put my hands in everything that had to do with creating a theatrical uh, piece. Writing it, composing it, directing it, chore choreographing it. And then I found out that you can't be a one-man show. So I started pulling in my friends to take on some of these other roles as the um, development went on. I got my, another friend to choreograph and I got somebody else to do something. And that's when I realized that how beautiful a theatrical piece could be when the right collaborators come together. Fast forward, I get all these offers to work for these nonprofit, um, Christian nonprofits as their either arts director or minister of music. I land in a church that I work with for about 25 years, and I'm in charge of the music ministry, the dance ministry, the drama ministry, and I'm able to be an artist, even though I'm not being paid as for being an artist, I'm able to do all the beautiful things that my imagination and, and my skills. But then I decided I wanted to go back and do something more 
meaningful for me. I wanted to do something to, to make the world a better place and not just hide away from the world. So I decided to go back into the theater. I worked with the producer of Xanadu for about a year as his right hand so he could sort of mentor me in how things were being run now because I had been out of the business for 20 years. Daryl Lee Summers and a few others talked me into going back to college and getting my BA. So I did at Empire State University. And I can't even begin to tell you how blown my mind was being in those classes and talking about art and talking about history and talking about concept. I went to a social justice class as an elective, turned around and made social justice part of my curriculum. I have a BA with a concentration in social justice. And now I want to make sure that anything I create and do has a social justice theme to it. Now I had an off-Broadway show running for eight months um, just before the pandemic, um, where I was the director and choreographer called Wicked City Blues. I've been doing a lot of producing and writing my own projects. I've produced, I think, at least eight shows in the last six years. Right now, I've been trying to shop a musical called Pearl based on the story of my Aunt Pearl Bailey. Um, I've been just so immersed in the arts that I can't believe that as a child, I would have never thought this was possible. It's like I'm living my wildest dreams, just being able to be a creative artist. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. I always wanted to act. I remember going to HB Studios and Earl Hyman was my teacher at that time. But then when I came back into business in 2000, uh, 2007, I, I started working with Essence of Acting um, with Lenny Godfrey and with them for about five years and really put my acting chops together. I've been working with Classical Theater of Harlem. I did a show with um, Negro Ensemble last May. I'm enjoying acting. I got some time on Harlem, I'm streaming on HBO Prime and doing all these commercials, which is a great you know, little side gig. I, I love being in New York because you, you don't have to be in a box. Yes, I started off as a dancer, but then I was a choreographer and also a writer and also a singer and also a composer. I've had music that's been published and I've published a book. So I would say just take the limit off of yourself and do everything you can think of. Wow. What a great story and what amazing energy. Thank you, CB, for ending with those words of encouragement. Take the limits off. Additional projects by CB are Children of God, Accidents, Thank You Amanda and Marriage Counseling are three short plays CB wrote, Mayfield at the Tada Theater, Restorative Justice, the Seven, Shay Shay La Femme, Harlem Dreams, and A Christmas Carol in Harlem, where he performed on stage as an actor, dancer, singer. Unentitled, At the Essence of Acting, under the direction of the talented Lenny Godfrey. And Right to Life, at KQ Playwright Short Play Festival, under the facilitation of Linda Crawford, an amazing professor and playwright. Bravo, CB. Oh, I can't forget in 1985, a hundred dancers from a chorus line, the movie made the cover of Life magazine, and CB was one of them. CB also is a guest speaker on numerous Sundays at Christ the King Church, which is hosted by Pastor John Cavazos on Zoom. Stay tuned for more untold stories from our Black industry dancers.